Okay, welcome to Lesson 1 in Poultry. Today we're going to be cooking uh, some turkey escallops with a nice coconut cream sauce and a rice cake. The rice cake we're going to start with at the moment because it needs to set in the fridge before we can cut it out and then fry it. Okay, so what I've got here, I've got some chicken stock, which I'm going to warm up. To this I'm going to add some soy sauce. Touch of oil, and some seasoning, some salt, and some pepper. Okay. When this comes to a boil, I'm going to thicken it with corn flour. You would have used corn flour before. Again, similar to arrowroot, what we're going to do is we're going to dilute some corn flour in a little cold water, and then we're going to add it to the hot liquid as it's boiling. The idea with this dish is to almost uh, overcook the rice and get the starch from the rice to hold and bind everything together. So with this rice, definitely not washing it. This is long grain rice. Just slightly thicken the liquid and start the rice is cooked in as well, which is going to help everything bind together. So I'm just waiting for this to come to a boil. What we're going to do after it comes to a simmer, we're going to put a lid on to make sure that no stock is escaping, no evaporation is occurring. Let it slowly cook for 10 minutes and then we're going to turn it off and we're going to leave it for another 15 minutes to fully absorb everything that's in the pot. From there, we're going to cool it down on a tray, cut discs out and then fry them to go with our turkey. Just waiting for this to come to the So When you're using corn stuff, make sure you obviously pick up everything from the bowl. And the, the reason that we do it in cold water is to help with the dispersion. We just put it in there when it's hot, it's going to plug up straight away. So just dissolving it a little bit first. We don't deserve any hot water because the heat reacts with the starch and the granules as well and starts to thicken. Just wait for this to the water. And when I'm adding it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stir the point where the cornstarch is actually hitting. So make sure it gets dispersed as soon as it hits, rather than pouring it in there, then it will let it settle, it become lumpy before I can stir it. So stir at the same time as putting it in. It's coming up to a boil now. We're boiling now, so I'm going to start to add in the cornstarch. I'm just stirring it where it hits. Waiting for it to reboil. When it boil, reboils, I'm going to rain in the rice, stir it. Cover it, set my timer for 10 minutes only. After 10 minutes, I'm going to turn the stove off and leave the rice, not, not touch it, not stir it, for a further 15 minutes. So we'll come to a ball now. Stir in the rice. The liquid's quite thick now, which is going to help everything hold together. Back to a ball now, so I'm going to turn it right down low now, as low as the burner can go. The cover on it. I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, I'm going to turn it off completely, leave it for a further 15 minutes in the pot, and then we're going to spread it out to a tray and refrigerate so we can cut the discs out. Okay, so now we're going to begin to make the sauce that's going to accompany our turkey medallions. We're going to make a coconut cream sauce. So, in here I've got some garlic, onion, chilies, finely chopped carrot, finely chopped capsicum. I've got some chicken stock, some red curry paste, a touch of mirin. Mirin is a sweet Chinese, sorry, sweet Japanese cooking wine, rice wine. Also got some brown sugar, which I'm going to use to season. And I've got some kaffir lime leaves, which are going to give a lovely fragrance to the sauce. So we're going to start with a touch of vegetable oil. 
add in here some onion, carrot, capsicum, chili. going to sweat it gently. So we're using a, a medium to low heat here. We don't want to get too much colour in the sauce, we just want to have it release its harshness and become a little bit fragrant. And add some salt and pepper as well. Gently cooking there, no colour, pretty low temperature. After about two or three minutes of cooking like this, we're going to add in the red curry paste. Red curry paste is very strong. Usually, when we're using, we like to give it a little bit of time in the pan roasting just to rehydrate a little bit so the flavour's nice and fresh. So, pop that in there. Just pushing it off the bottom of the pan just to release the oils from it. After a minute or two, when the curry paste is quite fragrant. You can start to really smell it. I'm going to add in the mirin. Cook off the alcohol. Add in coconut milk. Sorry, coconut cream. Lime leaf, and a little pinch of brown sugar. With the lime leaf, I just like to give these a little, little rip just to help to release their flavours. We're going to take it out anyway, so it's just staying there for an infusion, really. I'll bring that to the boil and let it just simmer very gently for about 20 minutes on a very low heat. We're just trying to get the flavour from the lime leaf, the flavour from the curry paste. Then we're going to give it a quick puree and then we're ready to use. Okay, so you can see our rice, we cooked it for, cooked it for 10 minutes simmering. Then I turned it off and left it covered completely. I've just left it on the bench for another 15 minutes and absorbed everything. It's slightly overcooked, which is what I want for this dish. I want it to so bind together. Right, so there's a couple of ways we can do the shaping of this. We can put it into a tray, refrigerate, and then cut discs out. Or if you've only got the one cutter, it might be an easier way. What we're going to do is we're going to push it into the discs while it's still warm, and then set it in the fridge. Right, so you see it's quite starchy and stodgy, so it's going to hold together okay. Right, so I'm going to push some into the ring. What I'm going to do is I'm going to refrigerate this, let this firm up, and then I'm going to fry it on both sides. Just using the back of the spoon to make it level. Wow, 
one more of us. For that recipe, that's given me three portions. You'll only need one for this dish. Have the rest for something else. Just let that firm up in the refrigerator for about half an hour before we use it. Okay, so we've got these turkey tenderloins and some turkey tenderloin pieces here to use for this dish. The tenderloin's the, the most tender part of any animal, particularly a turkey. Turkey can be very dry. So when we get cooking, we're going to be very careful that we don't overcook it. What we are going to do is make sure that the burn down to a nice even thickness as well. So to do this, I'm going to cut this on an angle. And I'm going to tap them out to an even thickness. So I've got these little plastic bags or a vacuum bag. You can use cling film. It's just to give it a bit of protection when we're tapping them out. When I'm hitting, I'm not hitting straight down, it's more like passing blows to try and really push the turkey out to an even thickness. I don't want to make it into nothing, I don't want to make it into paper, I just want to have some equal size to them. So I'm tapping it out. Plastic just helps the fish the flesh from not tearing when we're hitting it. If it hits straight down and it just thins out one area, whereas this marketing technique so makes it very still makes it very thin but quite even and spreads it. Carry on with the next two pieces. That's all done. So they're a nice even thickness and ready to cook. Before I'm going to cook them, I'm going to dust them into some seasoned flour. What I've got here, I've got some plain flour. I'll season that with some salt and pepper. Run the turkey through this, mix, this flour mix and just tap it off. I don't want the excess on there because the excess will burn. Just want to give it a little extra coating on the medallions when I fry them just to protect them and keep them moist. Turkey can be very dry if I Okay, 
so I've got my frying pan nice and hot here. Because I've got a large one, I'm going to do the turkey and the rice cake at the same time. Right, I'm just waiting for the heat to get in this. When we're frying things, we need the heat to be there straight away so it develops a barrier, it stops the food sticking to the pan. This one I'm going to use oil to start with. You can see it's quite hot there. And lower in very carefully the rice cake. That's my oil. And I'm going to start to very quickly fry the turkey medallions. very long. You see I've got a lot of heat in this pan. I'm just watching for the size of the turkey. As you can see here, just a bit. Golden brown. Turn them. Turn them very quickly. Very quickly. in the pan with the turkey now, it's going to turn. And what I've got here is I've got Tray just with absorbent towel to take out everything when it's cooked. So when the turkey's I can feel the firmness of that one. That is now cooked, ready. Finally, we'll take out the rice cake. Finally, this dish I want to just warm through the coconut sauce that I made earlier. Quickly stir fry some bok choy. The bok choy wash, you just cut up into just probably three pieces each one, it's quite large. Hot pan, and really I just want to collapse it. Just very quick stir fry. A bit of salt. Pepper. And all I'm looking for is the leaves to wilt and flat a little bit of heat. And they can just go onto the absorbent towel before I plate up. Just helps to take any excess oil off the items of plating up. My sauce is really good as well. So to plate this dish, I'm going to put the rice cake in the centre. My bok choy underneath. Arrange the turkey on top of the bok choy. Just spoon this sauce a little over the top. Finish with some fresh coriander. That's it. Turkey medallions with the rice cake, sauteed bok choy, and coconut sauce.